This episode is brought to you by Shit Audio, manufacturers of sanely priced DACs, amplifiers, preamplifiers, and EQ devices. Click the link in the show notes for more information. Many of you would have already seen my extreme enthusiasm for the Blue Sound Power Node. Today we're going to look at the new version of the Power Node, the less expensive version. It's called the Power Node Edge. And today we're going to consider 10 reasons why you might want to take a closer look. Reason number one, it's quite obvious. This thing is small. It can just be put on a bench and you'd barely notice it. It can be tucked away out of sight. So this thing is super discreet, super small, super compact. You get the idea. Number two, that compact size has been enabled by a move from class D, I think 100 watts per channel, inside the Blue Sound Power Node, the original. And we're moving into the edge, which has not class D, it's not a class D module inside there, it's something called direct digital, and we get 40 watts per channel. That's into eight ohms. Direct digital is a bit like, well, very often it's called a power DAC. So the digital signal travels all the way through the unit, and then once it gets to the loudspeaker output stage, it's there, it drives the loudspeaker outputs. If you want to know more about the technology used in the Blue Sound Power Node Edge, then you need to listen to my podcast interview with Matt Simmons from Blue Sound because he talked us through it. That link is in the description box below. Reason number three, there is a red hot chili peppers button on the front panel. Well, it's actually sort of like a tilted front touch panel. And also there we have a play pause button and some volume control, which brings us to number four, because all music playback is remote controlled using smartphone apps. So principally, and this is for setup of this device as well, we have to use the Blue OS app. But it should be noted that Blue OS, the app, is also available for Windows and for Mac OS, so you can control it from desktops as well as phones. And then if you want to use the app to stream Kobo's Tidal, Amazon, I think Deezer as well, Neil Young Archives is inside the app, it's all built into the app. Many people will know that I'm a fan of third party apps, so this device does Tidal Connect, Spotify Connect, it also does Apple AirPlay 2, and it will do Rune Ready when it's fully certified. It's not at time of taping, but it will do eventually. But Rune Ready is principally how I use the Power Node Edge. Whilst we're talking about Rune, let's take a break for a moment. I've got a recommended album for you. This is by Barry Adamson, who is a one-time member of The Bad Seeds, and he also used to play bass in magazine. This is a solo album from the late 90s called Oedipus Schmedipus. Great title, right? And it's a bit like an imaginary film noir soundtrack, but with much stronger pop sensibilities than much of Adamson's earlier work. Because a lot of his earlier stuff preceding this album was a somewhat dark. This is a little bit, there's one track that was featured on the Lost Highway soundtrack. The opening cut is co-written and sung by Jarvis Cocker from Pulp, which is a real yeah, a real surprise actually. Great track. And there's another song later on in the album that's co-written and performed by Nick Cave. This is a fantastic album. I think many audiophiles would like it because its dynamic range is very, very good indeed. Back to the edge, reason number five. It covers off headphone listeners, but not in the traditional sense because there's no analog headphone socket on the front of the edge as there is on the original power node. But still, we get two-way Bluetooth. So obviously we can stream from our phone or our computer Bluetooth into the edge. But we can also stream Bluetooth out of the edge. We can stream music into the edge and then have it stream that music out to our Bluetooth headphones. I think that's pretty cool. There aren't many devices on the market that do this. And that late night headphone listening could also be extended to 
TV watching because on the back of the edge is an HDMI ARC input. So we can really easily connect it to our TV, use our TV's remote, or in my case, I use an Apple remote to change the volume up and down. So we could do that, but imagine this, we then also put on a pair of Bluetooth noise cancelling headphones and then have the edge stream the audio from whatever we're watching to those headphones so we don't disturb anybody else. Number seven, everything is in one box. This is a streaming integrated amplifier. So we don't need to worry about digital interconnects or analog interconnects. All we need to do is bring some loudspeakers and obviously some loudspeaker cables to the party and we're up and running. Let's break again to talk about sound quality. I was a little bit skeptical going into this review that 40 watts per channel into eight ohms would be enough. But with the Q Acoustics Concept 30 that you see behind me, it's more than enough to drive the Concept 30 beyond what I would consider to be reasonable listening volumes or SPLs and without really very much strain at all. However, I don't think this pairing would work quite so well in larger rooms. I think either the speakers would strain and maybe the amplifier would too in trying to drive the speakers to fill that larger space. So I'm only really commenting here on this system, so Edge Q Acoustic speakers, as it works in my six meter by five meter room. However, if you've got a large room and you've got high efficiency speakers like a JBL, a Klipsch or a Zoo, you're gonna have no problems. This little amplifier will be the amplifier that can in your life. However, I will note that the bass sort of articulation and punch that I hear from the edge is better than the Rotel A11 Tribute. And it's definitely on par with what I get from the Lingdorf TDAI 1120. Now I mentioned that amplifier specifically because it too is, I guess, a power DAC or a direct digital type of amplifier. Like it's a digital amplifier, it's not class D. So the sound of the Edge and the sound of the Lingdorf are kind of similar, but obviously the Lingdorf has all the sort of subwoofer integration and room correction smarts. And as we'll see, the Edge only has one of those. There's no room correction inside the PowerNode Edge. But now we come to the spicy finding for this video, because in doing a side-by-side -side comparison between the original or rather the latest PowerNode and the new PowerNode Edge, I find it very difficult to separate the two on sound quality alone. Yes, the PowerNode, the, the bigger, fuller, more expensive version has the five presets on the top panel and it also has an analog headphone output. It also has a couple of extra features, which I'm not gonna explain here, which are detailed in my podcast, link below. But yeah, on sound quality, it's really difficult for me to separate these two amplifiers with the Q Acoustics Concept 30 loudspeakers. Sometimes I think that the Edge has a sort of plumper, fatter bass, but that could be because the, the fuller, bigger power node has better control over the bass driver inside the Q Acoustic speaker. It could be that, I don't know. Sometimes I think the edge is a little bit darker up top, which is a good thing for many, many speakers that I think this amplifier will be paired with. But whatever these deltas are, it's, they're not large. I really can't say with any sort of definitiveness that this one is better than this one or this one is worse than this one. It's, it's really a challenge for me, actually, and I don't often find this where I can't pick differences, but in this particular case with these particular speakers, yeah, I'm, I'm drawing a blank. But if you want me to describe the sound signature of the Edge, I would say it's crisp and it's clean with a little bit more tenderness and finesse up top, a bit like the, the full-size power node. And therefore it's a little bit like the, the Lingdorf in that respect, the Lingdorf TDA i1120 which again, I would have a hard time separating those two, just use as integrated amplifiers. I would also say that all of these amps, so both the power nodes and the Lingdorf, yeah, clean, crisp, but sometimes just a little bit lean sounding. You know, like people like to talk about, well, I like to talk about there being meat on the bone with the sound. And with these amplifiers, it's a little bit diminished sometimes, but my concern with that occasional leanness falls away when we consider reason number eight 
to look closer at the power node edge. Reason number eight to look closer at the Blue Sound power node edge is that it has a subwoofer output that is managed by the Blue OS software and the app. And we can also specify the crossover frequency. So I use the KEF KC62 and set the crossover at 80 Hertz. Now when I have that all set up, so the Q Acoustics loudspeakers, the KEF subwoofer, all sort of marshaled by the Blue Sound Power Node Edge, my concerns for any sort of leanness in the sound completely fall away because the subwoofer obviously just sort of nicely fills out the bottom end. However, I did find a bug. So inside the Blue OS app, when you turn the sub off with the little toggle switch, the output on the back, the subwoofer output is still engaged. So I was forced to literally physically unplug the subwoofer to take it out of the system. I mean, obviously you have to turn it off in the software to disengage the high pass filter that is applied to the mains when the sub is turned on. Further to that, I think that when you add a sub to a pair of stand mounts, what you're doing is you're giving all the low bass burden to the subwoofer and its inbuilt amplifier, which means that there is less strain being placed upon the main amplifier, in this case, the edge. So for me, when a sub is in play, it's almost like the quality or the, the robustness or the strength or the power output of the main amplifier is, is less important than if you're just running a main amplifier driving two loudspeakers, no sub. Reason number nine is that because this power node edge sells for 699 euros, this right here is where diminishing marginal returns start for amplifiers because this one absolutely wipes the floor with the competition when it comes to functionality. Now, if you're thinking, well, you know, a class AB amplifier will be better, maybe you'd be right, maybe you'd be wrong, depending on whether you want that sort of clean and crisp sound or not. Because if you don't want that and you want sort of a richer sound, then maybe you would be better served by a class AB amplifier like the Rotel A11 Tribute. But what you don't get in that is all the streaming smarts, the subwoofer integration, the two-way Bluetooth, the HDMI input, none of that. And lastly, number 10, this is kind of an obvious one really, but traditional hi-fi systems, generally speaking, if they're broken down into separate streamer, DAC and amplifier, they require a hi-fi rack. With the Blue Sound Power Node Edge, like the Blue Sound Power Node, you don't need a hi-fi rack. I've got mine on the very edge of a Kallax unit right behind me here underneath my TV. You can, you can barely notice it's there. It's super discreet, which is really where we came in to this whole video, right? And so I think the Power Node Edge is really for people who like the idea of the convenience of a streaming active loudspeaker, but they don't want all the electronics inside the loudspeaker. So what the Blue Sound Power Node Edge, like the Power Node before it, allows us to do is to drive a pair of passive loudspeakers. So we kind of have this really quite cool halfway house where we get to choose our passive loudspeakers, but our amplifier that drives those speakers has everything inside. I mean everything. Maybe not the phono stage, you have to add that yourselves, but everything else streaming wise and digital connectivity wise is in the amplifier which I think makes it a, an absolute stellar piece of FutureFi. This amplifier is not going to be for everybody. It's certainly not going to be for diehard audiophiles who like everything to be separated out into separate boxes, who like to choose their own cables, who like to buy an extra hi-fi rack, which is, you know, not cheap. So it's not for those people, but it's for people that are sort of coming over 
from what I would call maybe the mainstream or the, or the Sonos buyer who's curious about what the hi-fi world has to offer and maybe is a little bit intimidated in you know, taking his first steps into like a traditional hi-fi store. Although we do have in Europe a chain of stores called Hi-Fi Clubben. I like these stores because they're a chain. I think they started out in the Netherlands. I think they're owned by Peter Lingdorf actually. Um, and they are a good halfway house between say a Sonos brand store and a full on Hi-Fi store because they sell the Sonos stuff. They sell Sony noise cancelling headphones, but they also take you all the way through. I think all the way to a pair of Dali core loudspeakers. So I think the Powernode Edge would sit very nicely in a store like this. But if you're buying direct, you might be somebody who's got Sonos and thinks, well, what's my next step up? And you might look at streaming active loudspeakers like the Kef or the Book Arts and think, no, that's too much money. So if you don't want to make that bigger leap, you can get an affordable pair of stand mount loudspeakers and power them with a Powernode Edge. And that's a good intermediary step. And in fact, you might just stop there because I think this device is bloody brilliant. I really do, I can't enthuse about it enough. And if you share my enthusiasm for the Powernode Edge, then please consider hitting the like button down below. If you like my attitude towards high-end audio, in that I cover, you know, super expensive just amplifiers, like separate stuff, but then increasingly more often this sort of FutureFi type product, then please consider subscribing to this channel. And as always, thank you ever so much for watching. I have a t If you want to know more about the Edge's sort of more technical... Let's break again to talk about sound, because I'm not going to keep... If you want to know more about the technology inside the Powernode Edge... Was that three or four? Did I say three or four? If you want to know more about the technology, you... Do I need to do that again? I can definitely hear something happening outside. But most interestingly of all, is that going back to back between the edge... And if you share my enthusiasm, then... Back to the power node... Bauer. <laughs> <Don't sound. laughs> This video was aimed a little bit more at the beginner audio file, so really the target market, I think, for the Blue Sound Powernode Edge. Therefore, it is not laden with comparisons to similarly priced products. Not really. I mean, I did compare it to the Lingdorf a little bit, to the Rotel a little bit, but that's as far as I went with that. Because I don't think that the customer looking at the Powernode Edge is going to be there yet. It's probably going to look at the functionality first before he or she considers like, I don't know, a Rotel or a Marantz or, or a Lingdorf or a name or an NAD. So if you want to know how the Powernode Edge compares to another amplifier, I'm really sorry, can't tell you, haven't done that comparison. And I did, as you know, do the comparison to the original, well not the original Powernode, but the, the latest version of the Powernode. And yeah, I struggled to find a difference between the two. So. I hope that you can accept that this video is what you see is what you get and you see value in spending 20 minutes or so watching this video and that you're okay with the, the cost of entry to you being just basically having to watch a couple of ads.